Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Again, uh, we are meeting here uh, to learn something new today. Okay, so in the previous classes we have learned some uh, different concepts. Today also let us continue our journey of learning something new every day. Okay, today I have come up with the uh, concept called Interstate Council. This council has been mentioned in the uh, Constitution of India. Okay, so being you know uh, Indian citizens, it is our bounden duty to learn about the constitutional institutions. Okay, what they are doing, what is their composition, what are their roles and responsibilities. Okay, who uh, heads the uh, different uh, councils or different uh, organi uh, organizations under the Constitution. Okay, so let us learn uh, uh, interstate council today. Okay. <coughs> interstate council so before jumping into the interstate council let me have some introductory talk okay so india is a democracy uh, we are a republican country right so we have one solid uh, book called the constitution of india this constitution gives birth to various organs of the state namely the legislature executive and the judiciary okay so all these organs have taken birth from the this you know scripture called the constitution of india this constitution establishes the federal governance in india india is a federation the article 1 says that india that is bharat shall be the union of states that means this indian union is made of the constituenting uh, or the participating units called the states okay all these states together make the federation that is the union okay this is the article first so likewise in the constitution of india there are various provisions which talk about the federalism in india or federation of india uh, india that is the union of india is a you know very strong union it is a not a destructible union composed of destructible states that means these states do not have the territorial integrity the territory of the state or the area or the name of the state can be changed by the parliament that means the central government okay so that means the government of india that is the union is indestructible but the states are destructible with respect to their name and territorial integrity that means india as a whole country remains solid but the states can be changed okay with respect to their area or the name okay so this is the uh, uh, the indian union right see this indian union though the name suggests it is a union of india but there are various constitutional provisions which you know talk about the federalism this federation or the federalism is nothing but the participating units are there in the governance of the country at the apex level there is a central government okay at the periphery of this federation there are participating units called the states okay states at are at the lower level but at the lev uh, central level or at the higher level there is a union government or the central government see in the in our constitution the union government has the more powers compared to the state governments okay that is different aspect but what i am telling is that in the federation there are various participating agencies or the units between these units the power is shared okay let me come to the one more important concept called sharing of the powers under the uh, schedule 7 of the constitution there are three lists central list state list and the concurrent list see under these three lists the powers have been shared between central government and the state governments by sharing the powers okay by you know uh, having the their own domain of uh, working they have the uh, equal responsibility in our federal system okay this is the sharing of the powers there is one more concept called all india services the candidates from different states they will write the one central exam called the civil services examination in this civil services there are various posts are the uh, positions called the indian administrative service and the indian police service these two are the very important all india services to these services people are the candidates from different state will you know write the exam and they'll get the services and they are posted in the different cadres if the person is from Haryana, he will be posted in the Karnataka or if a uh, person is from Maharashtra, he can be posted in the Nagaland according to his, you know, preferences or the rankings in the examination. So this is All India Services. This All India Services service, you know, wants to establish the 
federalism that means uh, the center and the state will be collaborated or they can be coordinated in these services again uh, indian constitution is the written constitution it is very rigid, uh, rigid in its manner so this cannot be changed very easily so for changing some of the uh, provisions of the constitution which are federal in nature they require the concurrence of the state that means they require the ratification of the states the states must agree to the amendments made by the central government to the constitution in this way the states have the equal power with the center right see these are some of the examples where the center and the states have the you know uh, 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 sharing of the power and they are uh, you now placed at the equal footing okay this is the federalism or the federation of india but there are some constitutional critics uh, who will uh, uh, opine that who say that indian constitution is not a federation in uh, its spirit okay though it seems a federal country but at the core of its governance it is a unitary government that means india is a quasi federal country that means uh, there are various provisions which establish indian government as the strongest government uh, in this federation right so uh, that means they are telling that the state governments have the less power compared to the central government okay this is one criticism say again they sell, uh, tell that india is a, a federal 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 in constitution but it is unitary in bias or federal in structure but is but it is unitary in bias see if you look into the sum of the provisions like emergency provisions right integrated judiciary uh, the uh, amendment of the constitution uh, by simple majority right uh, or abolition or uh, creation of the states if you look into the uh, amendment to the citizenship provisions of the constitution right uh, appointment of the governors right if you look into all these aspects you will think that indian government is not a federal government but it is a uh, unitary government see these provisions in the constitution they will say that a, a, a central government is more powerful than the state governments but according uh, based on these provisions the there are critics who tell that india is a federal country some of the critics they tell that india is a unitary country rather than the federal country okay this is the federalism and this is the uh, they, these are the various provisions of the federation which are enshrined in the constitution okay to make this federation function very well we need to have some of the mechanisms as i said in the federation there are various participating units namely central government and the state governments between these two uh, levels are the tiers of the governance there should be continuous coordi coordination and cooperation otherwise what happens this federal government or the federalism will not work properly to ensure this proper working of the constitution we have our uh, proper working of the federalism we have various bodies or the organizations okay uh, these organizations major role is to ensure this federal governance okay one of such uh, institution or the body is the interstate council this name it itself suggests that it is the council made up of the states it, it, it is the interstate okay recently this interstate council was in news why it was in news see there are two developments one is the government of india has reconstituted this interstate council right uh, this council has been mentioned in the constitution the constitution uh, tells that as and when the president opines or uh, if the president uh, feels that the situation has come uh, for the establishment of the interstate council okay by establishing this council some of the public interest can be you know met or public interest can be served if the president feels that uh, the larger public uh, interest can be served by establishing the interstate council he has given the power to establish such a, such a council recently the president has set up or um, based on the recommendation of the central government the president has announced the reconstitution of the interstate council this was in news okay so along with the interstate council uh, there is uh, one more standing committee of the interstate council this standing committee has also been reconstituted under the provisions of the clause 2 of the presidential order or the interstate council order of 1990 this order is nothing but the presidential order the president ordered in 1990 to set up the interstate council okay so 
under the provisions of this order and according to the clause 2 of this presidential order of 1990 the interstate council has been reconstituted very recently okay this was uh, one news well, uh, there was one more news uh, that is a letter okay the chief minister of the tamil nadu government who is the chief minister of tamil nadu government now yes mk stalin is the chief minister of the uh, tamil nadu state government okay he wrote one letter to the prime minister in that letter he has expressed some of the concerns he tells that he has written that uh, though you have established the interstate council please make that council to meet very often every year he tells that this council should meet at least three times in a year this was one concern and okay at least three meetings uh, should be held every year there is one more uh, uh, concern of this chief minister is that the bills of the national importance should be placed before the council before that bill is being tabled on the parliament see uh, india is a federal system you know uh, and i have explained that right see there are states and the central government sometimes what happens this central government will take everything for granted and uh, uh, it will pass various you know laws which are of uh, highly national importance they require some of the laws require the concurrence of the states or they require the ratification by the states but without asking the state government's opinion sometimes the central government will pass the laws when the central government does uh, such things so the state governments will feel that uh, we are left you know uh, without you know decision make uh, outside the decision making process the states will feel that we do not have the proper participation in the cooperative federalism so uh, with that regard, the chief minister is telling that if a bill is, you know, uh, which is of the national importance is being passed in the parliament, that bill should be placed in the interstate council so that all the states can look into that bill and they can express uh, their concern regarding the bill. Okay. So, because of these two developments, the interstate council was in news very recently. Okay. Then, what is the interstate council i said this council has the mention in the constitution of india that means this council is the constitutional body right there are various bodies in indian government setup some of the bodies are you know uh, statutory bodies some of them are constitutional bodies some of them are just the executive bodies are some of the bodies are established based on the executive orders of the central government okay see among such bodies this interstate council is a you know constitutional body because the article 263 it empowers the president of india to constitute the interstate council as and when the president feels that a public larger public interest can be served by establishing such an institution okay so article 263 provides for uh, establishment of this interstate government uh, council by the president this is very important who establishes the interstate council it is the power or the authority of the president not the prime minister or any of the chief ministers are given this authority only the president can establish the interstate council okay based on the written advice given by the council of ministers you know it very well that the president of india acts according to the aid and advice given by the council of ministers okay then Along with the establishment of this interstate council, the president is also authorized to define the nature of the duties to be performed by such a council and its organizational procedure. See how this uh, council should work, what are the duties of this council, all of them will be defined by the president during his the order. Okay? By an order, he will tell that yes, the uh, council should be established and these are the so and so responsibilities are the functions of this council. Okay? This is the power of president. Then this interstate council, it is a mechanism okay, to support the center state and the interstate coordination and cooperation. Right? In the federal setup, the coordination and cooperation is very very important to make this federalism function very well to ensure that that the country is you know running according to the federal provisions of the constitution there must be a proper 
the coordination and the cooperation between the states. If you establish such a council, the states and the central government can come together and they can sit together on the negotiating table and they can amicably resolve some of the issues. Okay, so for that, it you know provides a mechanism. It you know it becomes this council becomes a platform to ensure the coordination and the cooperation of the uh, state government as well as the central government. Okay. It is an instrument for the evolution of the common policies, right? The bills which are of national importance, okay, they should be having the proper consensus. The uh, during some of the situations, the central government cannot act according to its own whims and the fancies, okay. It must consult the states, okay, so that the proper you no know, uh, policy is evolved. So, if there, if there is a proper consensus between the state and the center, the policy will become more and more uh, stronger, okay, it can last for a long time. Otherwise, what happens, these policies have to be revoked back and uh, the uh, implementation of these policies will, will become very problematic, okay. To avoid that problematic situations, the council will provide the instrument, it becomes an instrument for negotiating the differences, okay. All the differences can be put uh, aside or they can be debated properly and they can be uh, resolved in the council okay this council is basically meant to serve as the forum for discussions among the various governments yes uh, various governments are there and along with the governments there are various regional political parties are there uh, in some of the states the government is being run by the regional parties okay they might not be having proper say in the central government but when the central government you know uh, sits uh, on the same table with the state governments these po regional parties will be having the equal power as of the central government they can express their concern uh, regarding the some of the issues ongoing issues between the uh, different states or the issue between the central government and the state government for example if there is an interstate river water dispute is there that dispute can be expressed openly and the particular uh, particularly the affected state can make its you know uh, 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 problems or it can you know express its problems uh, very openly in this council okay in that way it becomes the forum for discussion all the uh, uh, debates or the discussions or whatever the uh, issues are there they can be openly discussed see it will become the forum or it can become a discussing the various problematic issues okay yes then what is the historical background for this interstate council when this was established who was the responsible for establishing uh, such a you know uh, negotiating forum okay let us try to understand that okay so 1969 uh, the state government of tamil nadu the tamil nadu state government uh, during that time uh, it was headed by the um, karunanidhi uh, karunanidhi was the chief minister he was you know uh, making strong points uh, regarding the interstate relations the relations between center and the states were you know derailed there was uh, there were various issues whether it was related to the official language or sharing of the waters interstate waters various issues were there and they were not properly resolved okay so the central government was away from the state governments these state governments were fighting each other uh, between themselves okay but this uh, tamil nadu chief minister in 1960s he felt that there should be a proper mechanism to solve such a serious issues which are arising between the center and the states so in that you know way in that you know angle the chief minister of tamil nadu appoints one committee called the pv rajmannar committee okay this committee rajmannar committee was established in the year 1969 this P rajmannar he was the pv rajmannar he was a very distinguished jurist he was you know uh, chief uh, justice of the uh, madras high court okay he was you know, appointed as the chairman of this committee in the 1969 and this committee submitted its report in the 1971 and it made a very strong recommendation this is a very important and the strongest recommendation of this committee okay rajmanar committee it said that there should be an interstate council and it should be established as early as possible these are the exact wordings of this committee the uh, interstate council should be constituted immediately in the 1969 or it was constituted uh, committee was constituted in the 1971 it said that uh, as early as possible or immediately the interstate council should be established okay this is one development in the 1969 but in the 1988 
now it is the turn for the st central government now central government has to think on its own lines right the state government commit uh, established one committee and based on the recommendation of the committee now the states are started to ask for the establishment of the uh, interstate council now it becomes the uh, 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 onus on the uh, central government to look into this matter and on that regard in 1988 the sarkaria commission was established or it was constituted by the central government okay uh, it was appointed by government of india this you know commission it suggested the council should exist as a permanent body right the sarkaria commission says that interstate council should be established and this council should be you know uh, interstate council should be in a permanent body uh, see as and when the president feels he can you know establish the interstate council but instead of that it should be established as the permanent body okay this is the recommendation of the sarkaria commission but the time comes for the central government to establish this council in the year 1990 the government of india creates or est establishes the interstate council okay based on the recommendations given by the sarkaria commission now so instead of you know creating any new law or you know without making any changes to the constitution of india the government of india it advised or the council of ministers advised the president of india to issue an order okay it was called as the presidential order through a uh, presidential order the uh interstate council was established okay it was in the year 1990 and it was established based on the sarkaria commission report or recommendations of the sarkaria commission don't confuse with the rajmanar committee and the sarkaria commission okay interstate council was established based on the recommendations of the sarkaria commission not the rajmanar committee okay now what is the composition of this council who will be there in this council okay this council is headed by the chairman okay that chairman is none other than the prime minister of india whosoever might be uh, there on the ch uh, chair of the prime minister that person will become the chairman of the interstate council that means prime minister is the head of this body okay then there are various members who are the members prime minister alone will not take all the decision uh, in decision making process he will be assisted by the members who will participate in this council as the members let us see chief ministers chief ministers of the all the states okay uh, we have so many states all the uh, no uh, chief ministers of the all the states will come together and they will participate as the members in this body again the chief ministers of the union territories you know uh, we have uh, union territories also which are ruled by the central government through the president okay president is the ultimate head for these union territories but there are union territories which have their own legislative bodies okay in the state uh, in the states we have the state legislative assemblies in the same way some of the union territories have their own legislative assemblies the union territories which have the legislative assemblies they are headed by the chief ministers okay the chief ministers of such union territories having the legislative assemblies will also come and participate as the members in this council then administrators of the union territories usually if there is no legislative council or the if there is no legislative assembly in a particular union territory such union territories will be headed by the official called as the administrator okay these administrators as the head of the union territory they will come and they will you know participate in this council as the members see along with the administrators of the union territories then the governors will also come sometimes chief ministers will not be there in the particular states especially when the state is under the presidential rule the chief minister will not be acting there the president is the ultimate head of this state but president will be ruling this state through the uh, governor okay during the presidential uh, emergency the governors if there is a presidential emergency or presidential rule is there in the uh, state such a state will be represented through the governors okay in that way governors can also participate in the uh, interstate council meetings okay along with all these members the six central ministers which are having the you know cabinet rankings they can they are the uh, members these six member uh, six central cabinet ministers will be nominated by the prime minister to participate in this council along with this six cabinet ministers there are again 10 union uh, ministers which are you know uh, coming here as the permanent invitees they are permanently invited that means whenever the central uh, interstate council meets 
uh, without you know uh, new inv uh, invitation these 10 ministers will come and they will participate in the deliberations of this council okay this is the composition of the interstate council then along with this interstate council there is one more body called the standing committee of the interstate council you know there are various committees uh, like ad hoc committees or the standing committees ad hoc committees they are the temporary in nature these committees are established to serve a particular purpose as and when the purpose is solved this committee will be dismantled or it will be decommissioned okay it uh, again it will go into uh, background okay but there is one more committee called as the standing committee once this standing committee is established it will be uh, in effect for a long time okay uh, these are not suspended unlike the ad hoc committees okay the uh, once the purpose is solved these standing committees are not uh, decommissioned again they once they are established they will remain in the uh, okay in effect for uh, permanent okay so uh, that is called as the standing committee this interstate council also has the standing committee see this council cannot meet very oftenly though the provision uh, the provision tells that it should meet uh, at least three times a year but it is not meeting you know very regularly but uh, when the council is not able to meet regularly there should be another channel through which these communications can be done right see that channel is nothing but the standing committee see this standing committee it was established in the year 1996 the interstate council was established in the year 1990 after six years of establishment of isc this standing committee was established for continuous consultation this is very important council will be meeting very uh, after a very long time but during the long duration of between the long durations of the time there should be the continuous consultation right this standing committee will ensure this continuous consultation okay then the chairman of this standing committee this is very important the chairman of this standing committee is the union home minister the chairman of the interstate council is the prime minister but the chairman of the standing committee of the interstate council is the union home minister this is very important fact and you have to remember it very well then as i said the council is you know ought to meet at least thrice a year Right? This is the provision. When the president established uh, the presidential order, uh, it contained this provision. It, the order said that the meetings should be held at least thrice a year and its decisions on all the questions are decided by the consensus. See, there should not be any uh, disagreements. Okay, There should not be any conflicts when the different states and the central government, they are sitting together, there should not be any conflicts. See, definitely there will be uh, conflicts there will be some issues which make differences of opinion but these differences of opinion or the conflicts should be resolved properly at the end of the decision making process there should be the consensus that means con uh, perfect agreement of all the participating states and the central government okay now what are the main functions we now we have seen the composition of the council and who heads the co council and who heads the uh, the standing committee and when this council was established and who were the you uh, know persons be, uh, behind the establishment of this commission or the council okay now let us look into the main functions of this council what does this body do, uh, does okay let us look into it it enquires into and advises on the dispute between the states you know uh, being the federal country it is quite natural that there will be some differences especially when the uh, question arises because of the sharing of the resources water is the very precious resource especially the running water okay there are various rivers which run across the country okay they will you know pass through different states when the river passes from one state to another state there you know conflict arises one state will be you know arguing for more quantity of the water another state will be arguing some more quantity of the water when there is a demand for water this will lead to the conflict between the states okay they are classically uh, they are very classic disputes in the indian federal setup, setup okay these interstate river water disputes okay such disputes can be resolved this is one of the major function of the council such disputes uh, can be inquired into okay this council can make some advices 
okay uh, regarding that dispute okay this is such uh, one of such functions then investigating and discussing the subjects in which two states or state and the union territories have a common interest see terrorism or security of the country is the very you know very important aspect right here security of the country means it is the common interest between the central government as well as the state government right when the uh, the issue is arising uh, on such a common interest okay the state is interstate council will facilitate proper deliberations okay it investigates and it discusses the subjects this terrorism or the security of the country or the trading of the country with the rest of the uh, world okay so these are all can be see these are bound to create some of the problems right these problems can be you know uh, very uh, uh, they can be investigated into and these problems can be discussed in detail uh, okay this council will provide the platform for such detailed discussions then third very important function is making recommendations for the better coordination of a policy and the action now one example is your naxalism Naxalism is a very internal, very important internal security, you know, issue in India, right? See, now we have various external threats from enemy countries or, or through the non-state actors also. But within India, the uh, problem is arising mainly because of the Naxalism or left-wing extremism. This left-wing extremism is in you know, a very severe in some of the states. Okay, the states cannot uh, take the decisions based on their uh, own, right? They, some of the states require the coordination from different states. For example, the Naxalism is there in the Chhattisgarh. The Chhattisgarh government cannot uh, act uh, on its own. It has to take inputs from the surrounding states, right? So it has to take guidelines from the central government. It has to uh, take the suggestions regarding the how to handle these uh, issues, okay? How to handle these Maoists, okay? While taking the inputs or while coordinating uh, for, you know, sharing of the intelligence inputs, the states will require the uh, collaboration or the coordination of the another you know state see for implementing such uh, the uh, policies which are of the common interest okay this council will make the proper channel okay this is the third very important function of this council next let us look into the advantages of having the interstate council why we need to have uh, this council Yes, we have looked into the functions of the council. If you look into the uh, functions of this council, it is very clear that the major advantage of having this council is that the proper coordination and collaboration or cooperation between the states, between different states as well as the state and the center. Now, specific advantages. What is the specific advantages of having this interstate council? Now, uh, you just look into these terms, GST goods and services tax right uh, disaster management terrorism and internal security so these are very serious issues these cannot be dealt single handedly right the center should coordinate it should you know uh, take the suggestions from the cent uh, state governments see uh, for you know taking the proper you know advice for having the proper you know uh, uh, to enjoy the proper uh, trust by the uh, st uh, state governments in these matters like GST, disaster management or the internal security and the terrorism, okay, uh, the central government has to take the help of the state governments. But this is one advantage. This interstate council will facilitate such cooperation. Now, this council is essential ingredient in building the atmosphere of cooperation needed for calibrating center and the state relations this is very important building the atmosphere of cooperation we are not only the federal country we are the now we are evolving into the cooperative federal country that means we are you know marching forward towards the cooperative federalism that means we are trying to establish we the citizens of india as a whole we are trying to establish indian federalism as the cooperative federalism that means I just in the introductory part I discussed that some of the provisions are you know unitary in uh, provisions of the constitution are unitary in nature some of the provisions of the constitution they try, you know, try to establish the equal federalism but 
to now from you know elevating into the cooperative federalism this council is very important it builds the atmosphere of cooperative federalism cooperative federalism is nothing but here the center and the state government they will be treated equally okay there is no power disparity between and the states these you know participating units in the federalism they will be having the equal powers right it is called as the cooperative federalism the state government will take the uh, aid and advice of the state governments for implementing some of the policies at the state level the states will be coordinating with the center in this way both center and the states have the equal footing they have the equal platform to come to a conclusion right see this is one of the advantages of this council now this council will help bridge the trust deficit between the center and the states see if you look into the some of the issues which were you know burning issues once upon a time like the official language this official language has created lot of hue and cry across the country it created lot of stir in the indian political system right to solve such you know hues and the cries or to solve such you know stirring you know uh, issues this council will provide the platform again so this will bridge the trust okay it, it will bridge the trust deficit okay the gap which is you know created between the center and the state this gap can be filled okay because the chief ministers having different uh, different opinions they can come together and they can express freely when the issue is expressed properly then only it can be understood by the central government or other state so okay see this will become the proper deliberating channel okay the main issues related to the interstate council first one is lack of regular meetings okay see this interstate council is very uh, it's not meeting regularly okay the irregularity in the meeting of this council has become major cause of concern for us okay see this is a very beautiful you know organization as i said to ensure the proper operation of the uh, federation this council you know uh, has become the major instrument to facilitate that federalism but if you look into the issue see it doesn't meet properly see if you look into this fact that the, this council has met only once in the last 6 years so no meeting since july 2016 see almost 6 years are over from 2016 to 2022 uh, 6 years are passed but during this 6 years there is no meeting even the last meeting was held in the year 2016 but that meeting was held after 10 years of gap okay so in the 2006 the ninth meeting was held 10th meeting was held in the 2016 that means there is almost a decadal gap between the two meetings of this council see so the major you know um, uh spirit of this you know uh, council is that it should meet once in a sorry thrice in a year but instead of meeting thrice in a year it is um, meeting almost on a, on a decadal basis see uh, 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 naturally this will lead to the you know uh, uh, no worries right see being a such a you know premier institution to solve the uh, federal disputes Uh, if it meets uh, such a uh, irregular on uh, a uh, such a irregular manner so definitely it will become a cause of concern so since its cons constitution in the 1990 this body has met only 11 times see as i said this body was constituted for the first time in 1990 uh, with the presidential order since 1990 almost 32 years are over in these two 32 years it has met only for 11 times right see uh, if such a irregularity continues the major you know uh, the spirit behind this organization or setting up of this organization will be uh, collapsed okay now second you know uh, cause of concern is that what could be the set what could be settled amicably among the executive branches is often taken to the door steps of the judicial branch see uh, in a federal setup there are you know situations where the conflicts will arise between the center and states for that matter hundreds of thousands of matters have been arised or the conflicts have been arised between the center and the states but most of them could be amicably amicably solved uh, by sitting together the, if the center and the states uh, sit together these you no know, differences can be resolved but instead of resolving the issues what is happening these issues are going to the doorsteps of the supreme court in the judicial system these legislative you know uh, disputes have been resolved see it is not a you know good option being a you know federal country uh, having so many options to resolve the issues 
uh, we should as far as possible uh, we should solve the issues within the legislative uh, you know uh, ambit only instead of going beyond the ambit and reaching the doorsteps of the supreme court we must try to resolve the issues in the judici uh, sorry uh, executive branch itself right tamil nadu has frequently disagreed with the central government's policies on the matters of taxation medical examination called neat and often talked about the rights of the states right see this tamil nadu has constantly raising the issues which are of federal in nature right like the taxation system taxing see central government tax, uh, collects the taxes and net proceeds of this taxes should be you know assigned with the state governments the states were asking more and more proceeds of the taxes from the central government for long time center did not give the you know uh, demanded amount of the uh, revenue to the state governments it was a cause of concern but recently uh, the uh, finance commission has you know asked to devolve the 42% of the net proceeds of the taxes with the state governments so this was the a uh, previous uh, sorry a uh, very recent you know net proceeds of the taxes between the center and the states 42% of the net proceeds of the tax will be shared with the states right see now uh, this is you know happening because of the other uh, uh, federal setups like the finance commission see now earlier before you know a devolution of so many you know financial powers to the state governments these state governments were asking for more and more revenues right recently the neat examination that is national entrance come eligibility test for you know uh, selecting the candidates for medical uh, education right see this uh, test has created lot of you know uh, dispute between center and the states if the center was you know able to you know uh, taken to uh, states into the confidence the issue has would have been solved very easily but unnecessarily this issue went to the supreme court doors in the supreme court uh, the court intervened and the uh, in the judicial system this uh, legislative process has been resolved see these kind of things can be easily avoided if there is a proper you know meeting of such you know premier bodies okay this is the statement given by the tamil nadu state chief minister what could be settled amicably among the executive branches is often taken to the doorsteps of the judicial branch this is the uh, issue uh, cause of concern next uh, it is it is just a recommendatory body whatever the issues are resolved whatever the decisions are taken at the interstate council these decisions should be you know implemented in its in their true spirit but what is happening these decisions are you know uh, just a recommendatory in nature these decisions are not taken very seriously right see if there is no uh, uh, legal backup if there is no action against not taking the decisions of this council there there will not be any uh, seriousness right so being a recommendatory body these decisions are the whatever the uh, solutions are arised those you know uh, solutions are not implemented in their true spirit then there is no permanent secretariat it is just an uh, okay uh, established through an uh, uh, presidential order this order did not contain the headquarters of this interstate council if there is a headquarter there will be any every chances that the secretaries of the government can go there and they can you know uh, meet with other state government secretaries and they can uh, resolve the issues since there is no such a mechanism called the secretariat right the it has become the problematic for the uh, you know uh, leaders to sit together then uh, though it is a constitutional body no doubt it is established under the provisions of the constitution that is under the article 263 it is a constitutional body but it is not a permanent body as i said as and when the president you know feels that uh, the interstate council should be you know constituted to uh, resolve the some of the issue in the public interest right see it is up to the president to establish it and to discontinue it but if it is a permanent body it would have been more and more effective though it is a constitutional body it is not permanent body because president can establish it at any time right as and when it he feels then only it can be established these are the some of the major issues associated with the interstate council now uh, let us look into some of the uh, issues are the uh, points which were discussed in the earlier meeting of the interstate council i said uh, six years back the last meeting of the interstate council was held in that uh, meeting some of the points were discussed okay so what what were uh, those points in the 2016 they discussed this interstate council in the council the 
प्राइम मिनिस्टर यूनियन होम मिनिस्टर एंड अदर कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर्स चीफ मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ द स्टेट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स ऑफ द यूनियन टेरिटरीज ऑल ऑफ देम दे सैट टूगेदर एंड दे डिस्कस सम ऑफ द पॉइंट्स दे वेर रिलेटेड टू द रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ द पुंची कमीशन दिस पुंची कमीशन वॉज एस्टैब्लिश इन द इयर टू थाउजेंड टेन this commission was mandated to look into the center state relations and it had recommended to uh, make the governor's office as a permanent office for 5 years no governor should be transferred before 5 years of his tenure right and he this punchi commission also had said that the governor should be removed if the governor had to be removed he should be removed in the same manner as the president of india is impeached okay so he this commission made the removal of the governor more difficult so this you know meeting discussed about the punchi commission such recommendations then in this meeting the state asked to maintain the federal structure amid going growing centralization centralization of power means whatever the powers are you know given to the states in that uh state list the central government will make some of the laws this you know uh, uh, meeting in 2016 it discussed such a issue like the centralization of the power then imposition of the article 356 this is the major political you know weapon for the central government to impose the president's rule in the uh, state governments it is also called as the constitutional emergency right see if there is a political difference between the central government and the state governments there are every chances that the central government will impose the president's rule see this meeting it discussed about the imposition of or unwarranted imposition of the president's rule in the state okay now in this meeting only the bihar demanded that the post of governor should be abolished see what is happening the governor's post is becoming highly politicized okay once the uh, power changes at the central level the central government will try to remove the governors which were you know who were appointed by the other party during their tenure okay see if the frequent removal and appointment of the governor takes place what happens there would there would not be any proper continuation of the policies at the state level okay now use uh, this you know a meeting also discussed about the security issues or the privacy of the citizens with respect to the other and uh, distribution of the tax uh, benefits right Be benefit sharing to the citizens the this meeting discussed about the other issues and the direct benefit transfers also then uh, it you know discussed the education also how to improve the education in india how to improve the learning outcomes among the Uh, primary school children and how to improve the performance of the you know uh, you know budding citizens of india then it also discussed about the internal security with uh, a focus on the intelligence sharing and synchronization of the fighting terrorism and insurgency and police reforms and the police modernization yes police is a state subject to have the proper policing uh, in the country we should have the proper you know uh, policing reforms if there is a you know, more and more reforms in the police uh, you know Uh, sector there would be you know better security internal security for the india and such issues were discussed in the previous meeting of the interstate council okay these were the uh, major you know points which were discussed in the previous meeting of the interstate council now we we have to look forward what to do we have such a beautiful body and this body has been criticized for some of the issues right but what to do for the future the in the future this body must function well right see what we have to do is that the central government must implement the some of the recommendations given by the administrative reforms commission punchi commission and the sarkariya commission even the rajmannar commission right there was anandpur sahib resolution by the punjab state government and other uh, governments in collaboration see these you know resolutions these recommendations must be implemented in their true spirit then only the federalism india can become more and more stronger and you can as the citizens of india we can really harvest the benefits of the cooperative federalism and india can truly stand as the unique country in the global you know um, politics okay see these are the ways forward implementation of the recommendations of the various committees is the major way forward for the indian government now okay this is all about the interstate council we will meet in the uh, next video